Former All-Pro wide receiver Josh Gordon, who recently was informed that he was reinstated, is planning on signing a contract with the Kansas City Chiefs. And Gordon is flying to Kansas City on Monday and expected to be signed to the practice squad tonight with the expectation that he will eventually be promoted to the main roster somewhere down the line. Gordon is currently 30, has had multiple teams contact him and express interest in signing him. But one of the attractions of playing in Kansas City was making it a long-term stop, spending multiple seasons there. And according to his agent, uh, that is something that he has really been driven by. He wants to find the next place. He wants his next place, rather, to be somewhere where he's going to be for a long time. Um, We all know Josh Gordon's uh, battle with substance abuse issues. We all know that Josh Gordon, he's been suspended multiple times because of those issues from the league. But and on and it's on the flip side, in his very short amount of time that he's been playing, he's shown that he can be an effective player and he is a game changing player for whatever team he's on. So there's a lot to like about Josh Gordon. And personally, this is something that that I have been always kept a close eye on. I've always kept a close eye on Josh Gordon and his story and with those these developments in his career because I am someone who believes that Josh Gordon is probably going is going to go down as one of the most underrated what if stories in the NFL history. Josh Gordon is someone who came out in the supplemental draft in 2012. He he wasn't eligible to play um, his final year in college, so he came out in the supplemental draft. The Browns spent a second-round pick to get him. They got him, and immediately he showed potential, and he showed exactly why he was going to be a game-changing wide receiver. 16 games is right there on the graphic. 16 games is rookie season, 50 catches, 805 yards. Led the, the Browns that year. He was their best player. Boom. 2013, gets suspended for a few games. Oh, plays 14 games. And in 14 games in his second year in the NFL on on a terrible Browns team, Josh Gordon has 87 catches, 1,646 yards, and nine touchdowns. Remember, the NFL record for at that time was, I believe, 1,700 yards or somewhere along that those lines, 17, 1,800 yards. And Josh Gordon had hit 1,600 in 14 games. There was... The, the potential was sky high for Josh Gordon at that point. And then, you know, his demons got the best of him, and we saw what happened. He got suspended. He reinstated later in 2017 after he missed two seasons. And he played well for the Browns, got traded to the Patriots. After that, went over to the Seahawks, was a key piece for them in 2018. And then finally, he was suspended again after those problems reared their ugly head once more, one more time. And th- so that's why I believe Josh Gordon is one of the best what-if stories because y- you you can't help but think. Obviously, the number one priority is you know his health and where he is and, and hoping that he, all of his issues are figured out. However, for me personally... I always was fascinated by hit by you know someone who had that much ability and and what he could have done. But that's all that's all NFL history now we can talk about that forever but he's going to Kansas City. That's where he looks like he's signing, he's going to be there and he's going to be catching balls from Patrick Mahomes sooner rather than later. And assuming he's going to be on the field, assuming all that stuff works out, I think this is a big impact signing for Kansas City. They are one and two right now. That a- AFC West is not in an easy division any longer. You had the Broncos who were 3-0, the Raiders who were 3-0, the Chargers who were 2-1 and and just beat you. So if you're the Chiefs and you have a losing record right now, you're thinking to yourselves, how are we going to compete with the rest of this division? How are we going to compete with the rest of these offenses? And how do we get better? That's what it's about for the Chiefs. Because defensively, I don't know if there's really a long-term answer, at least in this season, to really fix that. However, right now, what you can do to kind of mend things is find that replacement for that Sammy Watkins spot. Because they lost Sammy Watkins, obviously, to the Ravens this past year in, in free agency. So, And Nicole Hardman hasn't really come on the way that they really wanted him to. Tyree Kill still doing his thing. Travis Kelsey is still one of the best tight ends in the league. But that second, real, that third really receiving spot is, is still up for grabs. And if you put Josh Gordon in there, it does one of two things. 
one, it could push McCole Hartman to be better or push him into a more prominent role. Or two, Josh Gordon comes in and takes over that role. And he could be very effective in there. Josh Gordon is someone who has stayed in shape. We've, we've, we've talked about it before. He has been ready for an NFL comeback for a very long time. And I, I truly believe he has some of the strongest hands I have ever seen. I watched him in Cleveland those, those first few years very closely as a Ravens fan because there was one player on the Browns that struck fear into my heart, that struck fear into my eyes when I watched him on the field, and that was Josh Gordon because he could burn us, and I knew it. Everyone in the league knew it, and in 2013, he did. So he, I think he is someone who, has, when he's focused on football, when that's his, prom, when it, that's his primary focus, he is someone who is locked in, and he's one of the best on the field. Even if that doesn't translate immediately into um, great stats now, I think in prominent moments he's shown that he can be great. And it doesn't hurt the fact that he has Patrick Mahomes throwing him the ball now. I think that's going to play a big part into him. And he's he's had good relationship with people like Tom Brady. He had a great relationship with Russell Wilson. So this is a guy who can come in and and have that good relationship with great quarterbacks. He has that rapport around the league as someone who is who who great quarterbacks trust. So I truly believe that this this is going to be a great fit. And as far as, you know, what does he have left in the tank? I think we're going to see pretty soon. We're going to see pretty soon. Um, and I do want to say one more thing about Josh Gordon. There are a lot of misconceptions about him because there's a lot of people and, you know, there's prominent people on um, on networks like ESPN who have been who've been saying stuff about Josh Gordon that frankly isn't true. There's a lot of people who claim that Josh Gordon was suspended multiple times for just strictly marijuana, even though those rumors and those things turned out not to be true. There were other issues at play as well. There wasn't just marijuana. You know, mar the NFL doesn't suspend for marijuana anymore, but there's a lot of people who said that if Josh Gordon could lay off the weed, duh, and that's a quote then maybe he wouldn't have been suspended and, and maybe he wouldn't keep, be keep getting suspended. And for people who made those reductive arguments, I hope that, you know, they come out and, and, and own up to those words and own up and take responsibility for those because it's not as simple as, you know, just not just, oh, stopping smoking because it, it wasn't just those things that that. That were the that were the reason for Josh Gordon getting suspended. It wasn't just marijuana. There were other things at play, um, and you know, for for someone to put it in such a reductive way, for someone to really reduce it down to one thing and and make that the narrative behind someone's career when there are real problems, real mental health problems, real substance abuse issues going on in someone's life, I think it's a pretty shitty thing to do. So I hope the people who did that own up to it. Apologize for it and really make amends for trying to ruin someone's reputation because we've all we all probably know someone or, or at least, you know, ha or have been affected somehow by substance abuse issues or have know someone who is affected. And it, it's nothing to laugh about. It's nothing to make fun of. It's nothing to really, you know, just just ridicule someone about on your net on your daily TV show. So that's all I wanted to say. Uh, that, that was something that's been pissing me off for a long time, and I just wanted to clear that up in my opinion. Thanks for watching this video from Real Take Sports Talk. Remember to like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you get notified whenever a new video is released. Also remember to check out our live show every single Thursday at 8 p.m. right here on the YouTube channel. And remember, keep it real.